Hello and welcome to Revit for BIM training seminars. This is session one, the basics, and part four, editing types and duplication. Okay, so back to the screen. This is where we left off before. We've got four walls and we linked the walls to the roof height. Okay, um, this, this part, this section, we're going to talk about something that's very important um, to Revit, it's a very important concept and I'll try and explain it as best I can. Um, I can explain it by inserting a door, so if you do this for us or you can just watch along for now it's more important that you understand the concept than actually work along with this. So I've clicked on wall, uh, sorry I've clicked on the door tool, I've got a double door for starters Got external double door, external single door. Now, if I click on a wall, I can place a door into that wall. Now, that's a parametric object that lives within a wall type. Now, what that means is the number of bricks in a schedule associated with walls just decreased by that amount, and the number of doors in this project just increased in a schedule by one, and the type of door within that schedule will be referenced as an external double flush. So Revit is all about scheduling and being able to have intelligent outputs of figures, numbers, amounts, etc. Scheduling and we'll look into that uh, in a later video. But there is some important rules of thumb along with using objects and I'll try and demonstrate that now. So I have inserted a door. That is the reference to the door. I can copy that door. I've now got two versions of the same file. That's a, as simple as I can put it. That door is there and it's referenced in. Remember about the projects and families from the first video that's two references to that family type so that's two references to a, an external file that's referenced in now what happens when you're rushing and when you're unfamiliar with the software is you might want to make a change to that door at the moment that door is 18 10 millimeters wide by 21 10 millimeters high if I use this button here called edit type this opens up the properties for this door and if you scroll down the list there are an awful lot of parameters associated with this door such as thickness, width, height etc. So for instance if I'm in a rush and I wanted a, a door that was two and a half meters high, 2500 millimeters, this is the wrong way to do it so I'm going to do it wrong and then I'll do it the correct way. So to do it wrong I would just quickly go in here and go it should have been two and a half meters high. I will apply that. And let's just move over so we can see it. Apply and the door increases in height. And OK that. But notice both doors have changed. You've changed the definition of that family type. And it now, long, now no longer corresponds with the name as well. So when you're working on your own, this might not be a big problem. But Revit is all about team working and working um, in groups of eight, ten people all working on the same file. If somebody else has used that door with that definition of the door and you link back to the central file and you share your information with everybody, you will overwrite their information and you will change what their definition of a door is. And you might not realize that you've made a mistake until the other person comes screaming and shouting at you across the room so that's to be avoided so it's this is one of the first big lessons of Revit is avoiding that kind of error and it's good to get into it as best practice when you're first starting using Revit okay so I'm going to use control Z to undo the mistake I just made and I'll now do it correctly if I want to make a change to this door but I don't want it to affect the other door i.e. I don't want it to affect anybody else in my team as well. I select that single door, I go to edit type the same as before and I go to the same environment but instead of starting to make changes to the parameters 
the first thing I should do is go to the duplicate button. I take a copy of that door. Notice it puts a number 2 on the end. So that's now a unique name for that door. That's okay. I could leave it like that. But again, it's not very descriptive. If I'm changing this door to 2.5 metres high, I should change the name to 2.5 metres. So 1810 by 2500. Okay. Changing the name does nothing to the parameters, but now this is my door and I can do whatever I like to it. I can change the colour, I can change the size, I can change the materials, I can change the doorknobs, whatever I like to do. So I'll make the same change again, 2500. Okay, that. And I see the change now in my one door and not the other. So when I go to share my project, or share the work that I've done with my team there is now in doors there is now 2500 added to the selection of which doors are available for everybody in the team so that's great that means that you can work on aspects of a larger project and then everybody can use what you've created and quite often there are people dedicated within teams doing just that making bespoke items that everybody else can use. Okay. Okay, so that's um that's a very important piece of information. Um I'll just iter reiterate what I said. And this is something that comes up in job interviews as well for your information. If you're asked how to make a bespoke element by using an existing element and modifying it your answer needs to be I go to edit type and I duplicate that object before making any changes so okay and that's the end of section 4 thank you join us in section 5